So this is a question. I'm sorry if you can't uh, read it. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. So anyway, I will read it for you. Okay. So we are given a message signal that is 20 cos. Okay. So this is our amplitude. It is in voltage. Okay. 20 cos to 500 T. So this signal is uh, phase modulated with the carrier signal. This one, 40 cos to 5. Uh, 10,000 T. So this is very high frequency. Okay. So we are asked to find the maximum uh, index modulation or maximum deviation, phase deviation. So what is the maximum phase deviation? Actually, we no need to find. Okay. So after this six question, we have to. Okay. After after this question, we will move to the spectrum analysis. Okay. Um, so now we are doing the time domain analysis. Okay. So this uh, question up to six is re uh, related with uh, time domain analysis of phase modulation signal, phase modulator signal. After that, we will uh, see the spectrum or frequency analysis of the signal. Okay. Um, so I think you know what is the maximum. Uh, so, what is the maximum? Phi delta is the max. Okay. So, you know that phi delta is between minus infinity to plus infinity. So, this is this should be the maximum one. No. So, maximum. Uh, phase deviation or the modulation of index is equal to five. Okay, got it. Okay, so we have selected this uh, modulation index as five. That is the maximum value we can take. Okay, so five is the maximum value we can take. Uh, so. That is the answer. Okay. Then we are asked to find the phase sensitivity. No? So we, are, we have already defined the phase sensitivity that is, is equal to KT Vm. So this Vm is the amplitude of the carrier signal. Actually, this is the maximum amplitude. Okay. So this is the maximum amplitude. Okay. So it should be absolute value. Okay. So the maximum amplitude, the absolute maximum amplitude of the uh, modula modulation signal. Okay. So what is uh, our uh, modulation modulating message signal? So message signal is MT. Okay. So we have given it as twenty cos. So 500 T, no? This is our message signal, given message signal. Okay, 20 cos to 500 T, this is our message signal. So if we draw this message signal, okay, we will get this kind of signal, no? If we draw this, if we draw this, so you can see that, uh, so here, it is in the form of 25F, okay, 25F, okay. Uh, instead of this 25F, you can apply omega also, okay. Both 25F, you can apply omega, but it is given in the normal frequency. So what is this normal frequency referred? It say that number of cycle per second, no? Okay. So it say that number of cycle per second. So you can see that per second there is a hundred cycle okay so what is the one cycle duration per second for hundred cycle it is one second no? so what is the time per one cycle so it will be one by hundred no? that means <coughs> <coughs> sorry <coughs> 0 0.01 that is the duration of one cycle 
all they look like this. No, this is uh, 20 and this is also 20, okay? And uh, one circle, sorry, this is a sine wave, no? We have to go uh, cosine wave, it is like this. Like this, no? So this is a one cycle. Okay. So this point is point zero zero one. Okay. And this is the half of a cycle, no? This is a half of a cycle. So this point time point is zero point zero zero five, correct? Okay. So if we consider this point, it is zero point zero zero. Two five, no, and this point it is zero. So these are the important time um, point, no. This is zero, zero point zero zero five, zero point zero zero point zero zero two five, zero point zero zero five, and this is zero point zero one. Okay, and here also we have um, zero point zero seven five, no. This point zero point zero seven five. So these are the time point. So we have draw the signal with respect to time. Okay. So we know that uh, for every time, for every this time instant, there is a corresponding angle. Okay. We have learned it. Okay. So this is our signal. So what we have to now do? Okay. So I will explain a little further here. Okay. So what we have to do? Okay, so we know that hmm, phi t. Okay, phi t is so this one also very important thing you should understand. Okay, so once you understand this uh, basic uh, simple thing, you can continue very easily. Okay, so that is why I try to uh, tell you this thing uh, especially. Okay. So this is phi t, okay, and it is equal to you know that. Uh, so we have write it as omega c t plus. Uh, so. so phi t is equal to uh, phi delta plus uh, m t. No, so this is uh, what we write. Okay, so this is the five T phase. Okay, so you can remember that now. We have write our uh, phase modulated signal as AC cos omega C T plus uh, five T. Okay, plus five T, and this five T is equal to five delta M T. Correct. Okay. So this phi t is the phase, no? This is the phase. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so, so what uh, now we have to do? We have to keep this phase deviation, maximum phase deviation up to plus phi. Okay. It should be keep up to plus phi. Okay. We still uh, don't know the minimum phase. Okay. We still don't know the minimum phase, but anyway, we are asked to keep this phase up to five. Okay, the phase deviation. Okay, not phase. The phase deviation up to five. So how we select this delta? Okay. How we select this delta? So uh, in your lecture note, uh, no, I will explain it in my way, then I will come to your lecture note, okay? So, uh, if I take this side in view, if I take this side in view, that's phi delta is equal to kp vm. So, this vm is the maxim, maximum amplitude of the signal, okay, empty signal. So, if I take this, okay, if I take this, okay, so, <clears throat> So you can see that we have to keep this phi delta, okay? We have to keep this phi delta 
at maximum no so that means at five so this delta will be five okay and this kp is here and vm maximum vm so maximum is this uh, 20 no this is the maximum amplitude so here it is 20 so we can uh, select we can keep kp as five by 20 no so that is the answer okay that is the answer so easily we can uh, uh, we can uh, find it the kp but uh, you should uh, understand the concept here okay what is the concept <clears throat> okay so you can see that you know, so you can see that you know, if we consider this one okay so this mt is changing you know that's now it is changing sinusoidally like this okay so time to time is changing so at maximum at maximum point okay it is it take the value 20 no it take the value 20 so you can see that you know, this phase shift so this five also will get the maximum value okay also will get the maximum value when this mt is maximum no? when this mt okay when the when this mt is maximum you will get the maximum phase okay so what is the maximum of mt that is 20 no okay so at 20 okay so at 20 so this mt is equal to 20 okay okay this this total phase deviation should keep at five no we should keep at five okay. so we have to select this as five by 20 no correct okay so we have to divide the signal by its maximum amplitude okay we have to divide the signal at its maximum amplitude and multiply it by five then we can maintain this five no? we can uh, maintain this phase deviation okay could you understand this okay so we have to keep this kp as five by two okay so if i write this five uh, t again with this kp value and i will uh, write the signal also so i have kp 5 by 20 okay plus adiburina okay so uh, into multiplication multiplication by mt mt is 20 cos 2 5 fmt okay i, I will put uh, i will I, this, this should be 100 but i put it as 100 uh, fm okay so this is the phase day uh, so this is the equation no so you can see that so this when this one is at one that is the maximum no if you consider this one that is the maximum so you will get this minus and minus will cancel out okay so you will get five okay that is delta t max okay and if you consider this point the minus point that is the minimum point okay so this minimum means this minimum means this five also minimum no this one minimum means this five also minimum okay so minimum value should be minus five okay so minimum value should be minus five okay so so if we consider the minimum value of this signal of our signal okay so it will be minus one no at the minimum level it, it will be minus one if you consider only this cost signal without consider the amplitude okay amplitude okay so it will be minus one so you will get minus five okay so i will come to your lecture note again okay so in your lecture note it is said that phi t is equal to phi delta mt uh, so here it is mentioned at xt but i will mention it mt okay and he said that this mt is normalized no this mt is normalized can you remember in your lecture note 
it is like this. This xt is normal. What does that mean? We have put this xt within plus or minus one. Okay, plus or minus one. That is why I put the magnitude, the absolute value. So this xt should be in minus greater than to minus one and less than to plus one. Okay, so that is the normalized mean. Okay, so that is the normalized mean. What we have done? We have done simply done. We have divide our signal with the maximum amplitude. Okay, that is we call the normalizing. Okay, so this xt will become xt will become minus one to plus one. Okay, so I think I hope you can understand. Okay, so let's say let's say a signal like this okay we have a signal uh, like this okay so this is 20 and this is 10 okay and why we to normalize what we have to do we have to do this uh, we have to divide this signal by 20 not by 10 by 20 okay so max maximum will take one okay and minimum will will not take minus one Okay, it will take some minus uh, decimal value, you know. So this minimum value is less than this one, greater than this one. So it is okay, you no? I think uh, you understand it. Okay, so that is why we said that we have to, uh, we have to. <clears throat> so that is why I introduced this KP value, so you can understand it very well. Okay, so what it means that KP is equal to, okay, your index modulation divided by uh, the maximum uh, value of the signal, well, maximum value of the message signal, so that you can get the KP. Okay, so this phi is normally should be within. Uh, minus five or plus five and it should be given okay and also if not we can decide this what is the uh, modulation index but that modulation index should be within minus five and plus five then we can uh, find the factor of kp okay kp and c how we can normalize the signal okay can you understand it Okay, so when we are when we are using this KP, okay, I hope you can understand. If you didn't understand, try to get understand. Okay, uh, if has a problem, you can ask me. Okay, so when we are using this KP, we can directly use phi of t as like this KP NT. Okay, but this is not nominalized one. Okay, this is not nominalized one. This is not nominalized one. If we use phi of t as uh, phi of delta mt, okay, so this is the nominalized one. That means uh, we have to divide the divide the signal with its maximum amplitude. Okay, so we will get this kind of nominalized frequency here. So I rather use I prefer to use this KP rather than this one. So th this is very simple, no? So you can put the signal here anytime. Okay, that is why I like to use this one. Okay, rather than using this one. I am recording, no? Uh, okay, okay, it's okay. Okay, I hope you uh, you get it. Okay, so I like to uh, like to write my. Uh, I prefer to like my phase modulated signal. Okay, as a c cos omega c t plus c t m t. Okay, so here m t is the direct signal, our uh, message signal. 
and if we are using the modulation index, okay, phi delta instead of this kp, you have to nominalize this same thing by dividing it with v max, okay. So this is very important thing, okay. Okay, so if you write the total signal with this uh, this modulation index, so you will get a wrong answer. I think, can you remember when we are doing the amplitude modulation, I first do that mistake, no? I, the mu is equal to AM by AC, okay? So within mu, AM information is there. When I put the signal with AM, okay? So it has a problem. So always when you are using the modulation index, you have to put the nominalized frequency, nominalized signal. That means the signal should be divided by its maximum amplitude, okay? So that is the uh, very uh, important thing you should remember that is important for other modulation scheme also, AM, FM, DSB, all the things, okay? So this is very important things. So you should keep remember. So I prefer to use this KP, it is called phase sensitivity. Okay, it is called phase sensitivity. And this one, this is called uh, the phase, sorry, modulation index, okay? So you know how that KP and modulation index is related, okay? So please understand this, okay? Okay, so we have done the first one, okay? We have done the first one. So again, I will uh, summarize you what I tell you here. I have defined the KP value. It is equal to modulation index by the maximum of power signal, okay? So if I use KP to our modulated signal, XP and T, okay? So we can write, directly write omega C T plus KP, then our modulating message signal, the whole message signal with the amplitude, okay? So, but if I use the, 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 the modulation index, then I have to write it as omega C T plus phi delta MT, but this MT is nominalized. That means it is divided by it, the maximum frequency, okay? But uh, in books, this V max is not uh, mentioned. Normally called this MT is nominalized and this MT is between minus one and plus one, okay? So I think you can understand no? when you are divide when if you divide this MT by maximum uh, amplitude, so this MT will become will become in range of minus and plus minus one and plus one. No, so I think that is clear. If you want to uh, explain it again, I can do it. Okay, but I think. Uh, uh, I can do it if you want, you can send me, but I think it is better to try to understand it with yourself and if you couldn't understand it, you can ask me. That is the best way, but if someone want to, uh, repeat it, I can do it, okay? Okay, then I will move to the next one, okay? This one. Okay. So we are asked to write the modulated waveform. So we can easily do write the modulated waveform. We will write it. Okay. So the second one, modulated waveform. So we know that XPT, the modulated signal, AC, AC is 40, no? 40 cos 2 phi. Uh, 10,000 T, okay, so this is the uh, omega C T, okay, plus our signal, so I use KP value, KP is equal to phi by 
20, okay? And I can write the whole signal, 20, 20 cos Ohio under T, okay? So this is our total signal. So you can, uh, you can see that when you, when you simplify this, this 2020 will cancel and you will get five cos two five omega CT. So this five, you can see that five by two, this is KP, no? And KP is uh, multiplied by this 20, that is the uh, maximum amplitude of uh, our signal. Vm. So Kp into Vm, that is modulator, modulation index, no? So that is plus 5. Modulation is index is plus 5 here. So here it's Vm T is equal to 40 cos 2 5 10,000 T plus here this one and this one, we have 5. Okay, cos to five hundred. Okay, so this is our signal. Okay, this is our signal. Okay, okay. So you can see that our signal has a function of a function. No? So we have a function, and inside that there is another function of it. Okay, so this XPM become a function of a function. Uh, normally, amplitude modulation and DSP modulation, it is just a function, no? but it is not a function of a function. So this is a function of a function, okay? So this is our second answer. Okay. So we will move to the third one. What is the third one? Uh, Ah, yeah, this one is very important. This one also very important, okay? Uh, actually, after that, uh, you can leave, okay? uh, because uh, after this, uh, we have completed all time domain analysis, okay? Time domain analysis, but uh, you have to wait because we have to go to the spectrum analysis, okay? Uh, that means the frequency domain analysis. So here, up to here, the time domain analysis is completed, okay? So you have to uh, get this one, get this point. So we will do it. Find the internal frequency as e equals 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.0025, 0.005, and 0 0.001, okay? So can you have two or three minutes, okay, two minutes? and uh, understand what it take, what it tell. Okay. So we have uh, discussed it, okay? We have discussed it, okay? Internous frequency, you know? So what is that? So if I, uh, yeah, yeah, this one, no? So you can see that, so here we have discussed that, okay? For normal sine wave, this is our frequency, okay? That instance frequency, it is not changing. It is the, it, it is a constant, no? This omega c is a constant and also this fc is a constant. But in case of phase modulated signal, okay? This, uh, the instantaneous, instantaneous frequency or instantaneous uh, uh, angular frequency is not constant, no? Here it comes as omega t plus phi t, okay? So it is not a constant value. It will be changing, okay? So, so we will come to our question again. So we are asked to find the instantaneous frequency of frequency at that is equal zero and this point. We, we are given four points, no? One, two, three, four points, okay? So we will see how we can do it. 
So number three, okay. So, <clears throat> so I think, uh, uh, so we will look at the general form uh, for a moment, okay. So we know that it's PMT, we can uh, write test, this is a general form, cos omega C T plus phi T. Okay, so you know this phi t that is, uh, I will use the kp here, kp empty. So I can I can put all uh, the total signal here without a problem. Okay, if I use delta t, this should be a nominalized. Okay, so I, I use kp. I prefer to use kp. Okay, so this is the general equation for phase modulation signal. Okay, so this. Uh, <clears throat> So we know that if we write this, okay, if we write uh, the phase diagram again, so uh, we have one angle because of this uh, phase varying, okay, phi t, and we have another angle because of this constant frequency omega c, okay, and we have, okay, at this point we have <clears throat> the total distance, okay that is omega c t plus phi t, okay? So this is our total distance, okay? So if we find the rate, okay? If we find the rate, okay? If you find the rate, you can see that, you can see that here, the velocity here is equal to omega, so in a normal case, it is only omega c, no? Omega c, but here it will omega c plus phi t, okay? Okay, so this is the velocity at this point. So we can say that this is the ins instantaneous velocity, okay? So if, we, if I uh, denote it with uh, capital omega, okay, capital omega, like this, okay, it is equal to omega c plus phi t, okay. So if you consider the frequency, okay, if you consider the frequency, you know that uh, we have, we can uh, denote the frequency as this omega can be replaced with two phi u. Here I will tell capital O. So this is the instantaneous frequency, okay. So this is instantaneous uh, velocity angular velocity or angular frequency, okay? So this is the instantaneous frequency, normal frequency. It is equal to two phi omega c plus phi t, no? Okay, so if I divide it with two phi, two phi, two phi, I have got that if this is instantaneous frequency, that is a function of time, okay? Is equal to omega c, plus one by two phi u, phi u t, okay? So this is the, so this is the identity for instant, in, instantaneous frequency. So if you want to find the instantaneous velocity, it will be omega. It is also a function of t and it is equal to, sorry, this is fc, okay? Two five FC here, two five capital F, so two five FC. It is equal to omega C plus phi T. Okay, so you have to keep remember this. Okay, so you we can use this side in BD to calculate the instantaneous value of uh, that uh, different point. Okay. So if I go our message signal again, we have drawn it. Uh, previously also, so it will look like this, okay? It will look like this, and this is a half of a cycle, and this is a cycle, so this is our MT, okay? So this is plus 20, and this will be minus 20, okay? And uh, you can see that the frequency is 100, so one cycle duration is 0 0.01, okay? 
so here it is 0 0.0 0 0.0075 and here it is 0 0.005 and here it is 0 0.0025 and here it is 0. Okay, this is our message signal length. Okay. And so if we consider our total signal, so this is the total signal. Okay, so this is the total signal. So if you consider the total signal, this will be the instantaneous frequency, you know, instantaneous frequency. So I can write it here, T. Okay, so this is the instantaneous frequency, T is equal to, Fc plus 5T, you know, Fc plus 5T. So what is this 5T? So here, T is equal to Fc plus Ft 5T. So I will uh, I will write it as Kt is 5T is equal to Kt empty, no? Kp empty. Okay. So we know the K, Kp here. Okay. And if I if I by substitute that value so i will get the kp is 5 by 20 okay and now signal is 20 cos to 500 t okay so this 20 20 will cancel out and i will get i will get ft is equal to Fc plus 5 cos to 500 t. Correct? Okay. So this is the uh, instantaneous frequency. Okay. So we are asked to find the instantaneous frequency at t is equal to 0. So at that time, F0 is equal to Fc is there. Okay, FC is the 10,000 or something, no? So I will put it as FC, okay? It is equal to 10,000, no? So FC is equal to 10,000, we know the value, okay? And FC plus 5 cos to 500 t at t is equal to 0. What is cos 500 t? It is 1, no? It is 1. It is 1. Because now the 20 is not there, okay? 20 is not there, it is normalized, normalized, okay? So 20 is not there, so it, it will be one, okay? So you will get Fc plus five, okay? So this is the instantaneous value at F zero. So if you consider T is equal to zero, zero to five, and what is the instantaneous value? 0 0.0025. That is Fc plus, this one should be 0 0.0025. That means this point, no? At here, the cos 25 FMT is 0. So it will be 0. Okay. So this will be 0. So you have Fc plus 0. That means you will get Fc. Okay. So if you consider point 0 0.0075, Okay, so if 0 0.0075, you can see that at 75, sorry, at 0 0.005, no? 0 0.0025, then we have to find 0 0.005. So at 0 0.005, you can see it minus one. Okay, so here it is 0 0.005. Okay, five. So this one will be minus one and it will be Fc minus five, correct? Okay, so we asked to find the T at zero, zero, seven, five. So you can see that at seven, five again, this will be zero. Then you will get uh,
So one for you also, it is zero. So you will get again Fc. Okay. So then at 0 0.001. Okay. 0 0.01. Sorry. 0 0.01. So at point 0 0.01, what is the value? It is again plus one. No. That means Fc plus five. So if instantaneous frequency at 0 .00, 0, 0, 0 0.01 is equal to Fc plus 5. Okay. So you have found four instantaneous uh, frequencies. Okay. So you can see that that frequency is changing and after some time it again come uh, equal. No? Uh, for, for example, the instantaneous frequency as P is equal to zero and is equal to uh, at uh, the end of the cycle. Okay, so uh, within cycle to cycle, within one cycle, okay, within one cycle, within one cycle, the frequency is changing. Okay, changing here, it have. Uh, uh, somewhat big value when frequency is reducing, 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 okay? And come to some minimum value, then the frequency is again decrease, uh, increasing, increasing, increase, and it will come to the maximum value again. So this frequency, the frequency here and frequency here is equal, okay? So within one cycle, okay? One period, okay, between a period, the frequencies are same in case of sinusoidal signal, okay? So I think that one also, okay, okay. So, so uh, then we are asked to change this in, in uh, what is called the index modulation, the modulation of index. Okay, so we are asked to select this uh, modulation of index as five by two. Okay, so that means the so that is three, four, four, no? number four. Okay, so at number four. At number four, what is we asking? We ask to select the modulation index as five by two. In other words, it is said that we can have we can have the maximum maximum phase deviation phase deviation as five by two. So you know that. Uh, so we are asked to calculate the KP. So we know that KP is equal to five delta by uh, VM, maximum frequency. Okay, so we know the, uh, delta five, that is five by two. Okay, and VM is 20. Okay, so we will get five by 40. So KP is five by four, okay? So then we are asked to draw the, we are asked to, number five, we are asked to write the equation, okay? For complete signal. So complete signal is equal to cos omega CP, so XPN, is equal to AC plus to five FCT. FC is the thousand plus okay plus the KP is five by forty five by forty and our signal is twenty plus to five FC okay FMT. So FM is 100, no? FM is 100, okay? 
So you can see that this one and this one will cancel out and we will get five by two. So five by two is the modulation index, no? So we have selected. So we have AC force to phi of CT plus five by two force to phi of FN. So this is our modulation waveform. Okay. So <clears throat> here uh, our phase will go minus phi by two or two. Okay. Plus phi by two. Okay. Not the uh, total deviation we uh, we didn't select that the total uh, range of the deviation we get a range inside that inside the uh, the total range okay so this is uh, number five i think that one also easy and okay <clears throat> so this one uh, is somewhat important okay so this one also somewhat important so now okay now Now uh, it is said that our signal, our MT signal is is DC shifted. DC shifted with ten volt plus ten volt. What that means? This is a DC offset actually. This is the <clears throat> voltage offset. So what we are doing here? Okay. So we have our signal like this, no? This is our signal, okay? So this is from plus 20 to minus 20. Okay. So plus 20 to minus 20. Now we are asked to shift this signal by 10 volt. That is the DC shifting. Okay, so to shift this signal by ten volt, what uh, what uh, should we do? Okay, so we are given a signal. Okay, we are given a signal. Say that signal is uh, uh, getting from signal generator or something like this. Okay, now we are asked to shift this frequency by ten volt. So practically what we have to do, can anyone take? I think uh, you, are, you are doing labs. You have this basic electronic knowledge, I think. So can anyone take how we can shift it? Yeah, it is not uh, relevant to our question okay but uh, i just asked the as a practical question how if, if we have a signal using a signal generator we want to shift it for some uh, some purpose yeah 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 yeah, no, this, that is uh, correct okay so we have to move the signal okay forward to move the signal forward what we have to do we have to just add the dc uh, we, we have to just add the at the dc voltage no after the signal then at the input we will have shifted signal by 10 volt okay so uh, very good notice okay so can you tell uh, one one uh, example that we want to shift the signal to upper okay if you are using arduino project i think uh, you have done it tell me one one uh, one uh, one or two, that is also a practical question, okay? 
tell me one or two location that we have to shift the signal to upward or backward. So any, uh, I think, uh, uh, so for your mini project, uh, maybe for your mini project, uh, did you use the analog to digital conversion, ABC? Okay, so normally ABC we want to use to sample or convert uh, analog signal You are not doing the mini project. So electronic and other module. I think uh, it is because of this pandemic situation. No? Most of you guys, uh, you have engineering design. So I think uh, in engineering design project, uh, I think after you do that, uh, that module you will get very good understanding okay so i think if you are using the laboratory frequently okay but uh, due to the pandemic situation you couldn't do that okay uh, so you can uh, familiar with these things okay so i will tell it uh, for analog to digital conversion okay so normally if we have adc okay normally adc can't uh, sample the minus voltage, okay? If you put a waveform like this, okay? It only sample this uh, positive voltages, okay? It can't sample this uh, negative voltage, okay? It cannot sample this negative voltage. It can only sample this positive, positive one, this one, okay? So, so if we sample it and uh, if we uh, store it in in a RAM or something, in Arduino RAM or something, if we reconstruct the signal using a digital to analog converter, we will have only this kind of signal. Okay, so this information is lost. Okay. So avoid that one. We have to do this uh, uh, DC offset, DC shifting. Okay. We are shifting this uh, minus value up to this plus value. Okay, so we are adding some DC offset. Okay, we are adding some DC offset, and we shift the signal like this. Okay, then we can sample for two signal. Uh, so anyway, we will come to our. Uh, question okay okay so here we are give uh, we have give a plus dc offset okay so here from this side we are giving the plus dc voltage okay then the signal will become like this okay so the maximum point will become like this okay so this will be plus 30 and this will be minus 10 okay so what is we are doing here we are add we are give a dc offset by 10 volt we add these two signals okay so this point will move to 30 okay and this point you have minus 20 and this one minus 10 so minus 20 plus 10 it will shift to minus 10 okay and if you consider this this point this point okay it is zero voltage zero plus ten it will shift to ten voltage okay like this the 
there. Signal is shifting. Okay. Now we have 32 minus 10. Okay. So now we are asked to draw. Now we are asked to draw the you know, uh, find the PM signal, PM signal at the Phi delta is equal to this is max. Phi delta max is equal to phi. Okay. So we can easily find that one. Okay. So here we have to select, we have to calculate KP as uh, phi delta max by the max. Okay. So here the maximum voltage is 30. No? So we have KP as five by third, okay? So this delta is less than definitely five, no? Will be less than plus five. But uh, what is the minimum value? Minimum value is this, no? Minus 10. So at five, 10 is my, uh, so, sorry. So this is the, uh, this is the minimum amplitude, okay? So at the minimum amplitude, okay, at the minimum amplitude, you will get the minimum five. So minimum five, delta minimum, you will get it as five by 30 plus 10. Okay, so you will get five by six. Okay, so here it is minus five by two. Okay, so this is the five delta. So what I want to tell you is that this phi should be within phi should be within minus phi plus phi to minus phi okay but uh, within this range we can get any value for this uh, modulation index okay that is the idea you should get here okay so we we can select kp as phi by 30 okay so if we write the signal Okay, if we write the signal, we have XP and P is equal to AC cos e phi. This is uh, 10,000, that is FC plus again cos. Sorry, we have KP, KP is 5 by 30. Okay, 5 by 30. Okay, 5 by 30. What is our signal? Our signal is cos to five fm. That is hundred. No, that is hundred t plus ten. Is it okay? Is this correct? Is this our signal? Is this our message signal? Correct, no? Because uh, here we have the, our signal is DC offset by 10. So we have cos 2 5 100 t plus 10. Okay, so this is our total signal. Okay, total signal. Is this correct? There is a wrong actually. What is the wrong? If I write it here like this, okay, it is wrong. What is the wrong? This thing is. I can't put this 10. Why?
No, actually, it is not uh, the issue with this one. Okay, so here also I put I have to put the thirty. Okay, that is the correct. One. Is it correct? If I put thirty here, is that correct? So here I am using the KP, no? I am using the KP, not the modulation index, not the modulation index. So I am using the KP. So I can write my signal, MT. Okay. So my signal is 30 cos, sorry, it is not 30, here it is 20, no? Sorry, this is 20. So my signal is 20 cos to five uh, FM P. This is my original signal. And after I DC shifted, the, uh, after give a DC, DC offset, my signal will like this. No? This is my signal. This is now our information signal. So here I use the KP here, and I I, I have also a mistake here. Okay. So this is my signal. Okay. So if I use the KP, I can use my total signal without nominalizing. It. Okay. So this is the signal. So this is the. So if I put the twenty here, that is correct. Okay. So I will write it again. So I think uh, it is clear for you. Plus, and we have five by thirty. That is our KP value. Okay, and we have twenty plus. Five five hundred P plus ten. Okay. So this is the correct. Okay. So if I normalize means if I use the uh, index modulation okay index modulation the index modulation will be index modulation will be uh, what so index modulation will be so uh, it is for your delta, okay? And the minimum will be uh, for you, okay? Minimum will be for you, and the maximum, sorry, maximum will be for you, and the minimum will be minus five by three, no? Correct? This is the delta, if I, I put in delta. So, I think uh, you better write in this way. Okay. So this is our signal, no? Correct. Okay. I think uh, you got it. Okay. So, <clears throat> okay. Another one is, another one, another very important thing is, okay. So if you are asked to find the power of the signal, okay? If you are asked to find the power of the signal, that may be a trans transmission power, okay? Transmission power of the signal. So how can you find it? Okay, so you have this uh, total signal, okay? AC cos to five FCT, Okay, plus KP M cos to five FMT. This kind of signal you have. So if you ask to find the power of the signal, so how can you do? 
So I, I, I already told, uh, told you that uh, to evaluate the power of the signal, we have to integrate this. Okay, we have to integrate this within one cycle. Okay, with respect to dt. Okay, then we can find the uh, power. Okay, that is the that is how to last tutorial we learned that. Okay, so if I okay, so you can see that uh, so this this is okay. So if we if we evaluate a power of our modulation signal, modulate sorry carrier signal, so you will get after multiply after integrate it within uh, within one uh, period, you will get you will see square by two. No? I think you can remember this. We got this answer, so I'm not going to evaluate it again. Okay. It will be boring for you. Okay. So you can see that the amplitude square divided by two, you can get the answer. Okay. And here, what is we are doing? And here also, we are, we have this cos 2 phi FCT plus phi T, but, but now this phi also vary. Okay. This phi vary in phi leads to what this variant phi leads to what leads to change the and frequency no leads to change the frequency of this uh, carrier signal okay so we know that this frequency is not affected to the power okay only the amplitude is affecting power okay but this uh, this term Okay, or fairly speaking, this term will not affect to the will not affect to the amplitude amplitude of the signal. Okay, it is only affected to the frequency of the signal. Okay, so if we uh, if we uh, get the power of any x uh, module phase modulated signal power okay within pdt you will get the carrier amplitude square divided by two because the carrier amplitude is not affecting by the phase modulation Okay, amplitude is not affecting by the phase modulation, but this is different in A because amplitude is affected, affecting, amplitude is affected by the modulation, A modulation, so we get different power. Okay, but you know that if we select any message signal, it will not affect the amplitude of the signal. Okay, it will affect only the frequency of uh the modulated signal okay okay so any case we get the power ac square by two okay so for for this case if you want if we ask to find the power of the signal we can use deciding the ac square by two our ac is 40 volt so that means 40 square by two so we get the power okay by two, so we get 1800 watt, like this. Okay, so this is the power of the signal. Okay, so uh, it is not affected by the MT. If you select any MT, if you have any MT, the power only depends on the amplitude of the carrier signal. Okay, please keep remember that one. Okay, so I think we have almost uh, finished discussing the. Discussing the discussing the uh, time domain analysis of uh, phase modulation signal. Okay, and I have a MATLAB uh, program to show you. Okay, so I have write a MATLAB program. 
Okay. So I can, if you want, I can send it to you. Okay. So our frequency is here. So here I put, uh, this is my module, uh, the information signal, modulating frequency. That is, uh, we have 100, no? We have 100. And carrier signal, we have uh, 10,000, no? Okay. So to keep my, uh, keep my waveform in, uh, in, in a, a fair range, I will express this in, in terms of kilohertz, okay? So this is 100 kilohertz and this is one, okay? One. So this is the amplitude of the signal, modulating signal, information signal, and this is the amplitude of our carrier signal. And here I define the phase sensitivity or KP, okay? That is 5, 5 a.m. And here I define the uh, modulation index. This is the modulation index, okay? So this is the modulation index. Okay, so here the carrier signal, and here we have the information signal. So this is the carrier signal. So this is very simple MATLAB program. Okay. Carrier signal and this is our message signal. And this is our phase modulated signal. Okay. Signal. So if we uh, so I have got this so all uh, all the uh, waveform the modulated waveform, sorry, modulating waveform, uh, carrier signal, the complete signal. So I put this as XC, our carrier signal, okay? So this is carrier signal, XC, okay? So this is the modulated signal, XPM, phase modulated signal, okay? And this will be the phase modulated signal. No? So I have changed the name to get more clear. Okay. So this is our carrier signal. This is our modulating signal. This is our phase modulated signal. And I am going to plot it in one uh, plot. Okay. So we have. Uh, so what is the issue here? <laughs> So this is very uh, high frequency, you know, 100, okay? So we have to put a very low value here. Uh, yeah. uh, we can put it, but then we can't see the uh, modulating signal, no? because it is very slowly uh, varying. This is our carrier signal, these are the modulated signal, but uh, we can't see the, uh, this is a red one is the modulating signal, okay? That means information signal. So information signal uh, frequency is very small. Okay, so this is modulating frequency. Okay. So we can't uh, see it very well. So let me choose another value, okay? Uh, because the, with this, uh, High frequency, we can't plot it in one range. We can plot it separately, but in one range, we can't plot it because one frequency is very higher than the other frequency, okay? So we have, uh, so one, let's say this point two or something, okay? So I will put this as one, okay? So here I select uh, uh, omega in mass uh, 5 by 10 and omega s 2 5. 
okay, five by ten and two five. So it is twenty times uh, greater. No? This is five by ten and this is two five. So that means it is twenty five, uh, twenty times greater than the uh, module. A, the carrier signal is uh, twenty times greater than the module A in frequency. Okay. So let's look this one. Uh, Uh, yeah, you can go. Okay, so you can see that. Okay, so this red color is our uh, modulating signal, information signal, and this is our face modulator. The blue one is the face modulated signal, and this yellow one is uh, carrier signal. Okay, so it is uh, high frequency and this is low frequency. Uh, so you can see that. In phase modulated signal, we can't see any phase change. No, <laughs> can you see any phase change? No, you can't see any phase change, but you can see a frequency change. No, you can see a frequency range like in FM. Okay, so if I um, oh, let me go it uh, somewhere. So you can see that, okay? You can see that no? our modulating signal is from twenty plus twenty to minus twenty, okay, in this range, okay. And this is our carrier signal. I think you can remember that this point we have found the instantaneous uh, frequency that is equal to F C. Okay, and uh, also at uh, this point, so this is our this is our zero axis. Okay, this is our zero axis. It is like this. Okay, so this point we have found the frequency. So this point it is FC plus five. No, this point we get FC plus. Uh, but uh, this is not uh, for that signal, okay? Uh, I'm considering that omega m is uh, 100 and omega c is 10,000 signal, okay? So for that signal, we have fc plus phi here, this point, and this point we have the frequency at fc, okay? And this point, okay, this point we have fc minus phi, okay? And this point also we have FC, and this point again we have FC plus phi. Okay. So you can see that uh, from here to here, the frequency is uh, uh, reducing, and here to here again the frequency is reducing. Okay. And after this level, again frequency is uh, increasing. No? So frequency is increasing, so you can see the increase. Okay. So you can see the displays here. So you have a big circle. Then from here to here, the circle is getting low. No? So from here to here, the frequency is increasing again. And again, after here to here, frequency is decreasing. Start to decrease, and it is continuing decreasing. Okay. So this is the phase modulation. Okay. This is the phase modulation. Okay, uh, so I hope uh, you got uh, all time domain analysis. Okay, so let us start the frequency domain analysis. But uh, let's have about 20 minutes break. Okay, uh, so if you are interested to stay with me, you can stay, otherwise, you can log anyway. I will do the frequency analysis because I have to upload it. Okay. Then I will do it whether you are here or not here. But, uh, if, you, but uh, if you are very boring and sometime now you are very tired, the information not goes to your mind, okay? Then you can leave, no issue. 